The year was 1997. Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman were two of the biggest names in Hollywood. And Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman teamed up to make a weird, thought-provoking sci-fi thriller called Gattaca. Gattaca was an odd sort of futuristic movie about life in a society where your genes and your DNA essentially dictated how your life would go. Your genetic makeup was used by the all-powerful evil state to determine your usefulness to society. Ten fingers, ten toes, that's all that used to matter. Not now. Now, only seconds old, the exact time and cause of my death was already known. Neurological condition, 60% probability. Manic depression, 42% probability. Attention deficit disorder, 89% probability. Heart disorder, 99% probability. Early fatal potential. Life expectancy, 30.2 years. Gattaca was really quite excellently weird in its own way, uh, but it was a flop. It uh, reportedly cost about $36 million to make. It sold only enough tickets to take in about a third of that. So really almost nobody saw Gattaca when it was widely released to the public back in 1997. But somebody saw it, or at least somebody read the Wikipedia page about it, because Republican Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky just gave a speech in support of Ken Cuccinelli in the Virginia governor's race, and the speech that Rand Paul gave seems to have been totally plagiarized, plagiarized from the Wikipedia page on Gattaca. So Gattaca was a weird topic for a speech in a governor's race to begin with, but what's weirder is trying to be a candidate for president, which Rand Paul is trying to do, and thinking that you're going to get away with lifting your speeches from Wikipedia while you're doing that. Rand Paul traveled down to Lynchburg, Virginia today, the home of Jerry Falwell's Liberty University. His speech overall was about being anti-abortion and Ken Cuccinelli being very anti-abortion. And the theme he used to illustrate that was basically, he said that people who are, cho who are, who are pro-choice on the issue of abortion are sort of like the evil autocratic state in the movie Gattaca. They want to kill off anyone whose DNA and genes aren't approved of by society. Seriously, that's the argument. People who are pro-choice want to start practicing Nazi-style eugenics in America, or at least Gattaca-style eugenics. So therefore, vote for Ken Cuccinelli. It was kind of weird. In the movie Gattaca, the not-too-distant future, eugenics is common, and DNA plays the primary role in determining your social class. The weird thing about that line from Senator Paul's speech today, in the not-too-distant future, eugenics is common and DNA plays a primary role in determining your social class, is that that line appears almost verbatim in the Wikipedia entry on Gattaca. Quote, in the not-too-distant future, liberal eugenics is common and DNA plays the primary role in determining social class. Hey, that's what Rand Paul said. And it looks like it's not a coincidence. Check this out. This is a little bit later in the Wikipedia entry. It's a description of the plot line of Gattaca. Due to frequent screening, Vincent faces genetic discrimination and prejudice. The only way he can achieve his dream of becoming an astronaut is to become a borrowed ladder. That's Wikipedia. Now here's Rand Paul today. Due to frequent screenings, Vincent faces genetic discrimination and prejudice. The only way he can achieve his dream of being an astronaut is he has to become what's called a borrowed lab. Rand Paul's speech today on Gattaca was totally ripped off of Wikipedia. Yeah, from Wikipedia. Ethan Hawke's character, quote, assumes the identity of Jerome Morrow, a former swimming star with a genetic profile second to none, who had been injured in a car accident, leaving him paralyzed. Hit it, Senator. He assumes the identity of Jerome Mora, world-class swimming star whose genetic profile is said to be secondary to none, but he's been paralyzed in a car accident. This is weird, right? He's just up there reading Wikipedia off the teleprompter. Quote, Vincent buys Jerome's identity and uses his valid DNA in blood, hair, tissue, and urine samples to pass screening. Right, Senator? Jerome buys his identity uses his DNA, his blood, his hair, his tissue, his urine to pass the, the screening. Rand Paul wants to be president, but right now he's just lifting whole sections of this Wikipedia entry hoping that nobody's going to notice and he can call it his speech. It's not like this hasn't happened before to presidential candidates. Herman Cain famously plagiarized Donna Summer, remember, when he ripped off the theme song to the Pokemon movie during the 2012 campaign. But you know what? That was Herman Cain. 
When Joe Biden got caught plagiarizing a speech back in the 1988 presidential campaign, that was seen as essentially the end of his presidential run that year. It took him more than a decade before he was allowed back into the top tier of candidates. What will the fallout be for Rand Paul? We reached out to Senator Paul's office tonight to see if they had some sort of explanation for this bout of really, really blatant plagiarism. We'll let you know if we hear back. But in the meantime... <laughs> Poor Ken Cuccinelli, right? This is honestly the last thing he needs right now. He's already down double digits in the latest polling. There's already there's only eight days left until the election. The sitting Republican governor he's trying to replace is now waiting on his possible indictment, which if it's going to come, is going to come between Election Day and Thanksgiving. And the last national headliner event that he gets before Election Day is this dude at Jerry Falwell University talking about a 1990s Uma Thurman movie and plagiarizing the Wikipedia page on it. Thanks, Senator. So on the one hand, poor Ken Cuccinelli. On the other hand, what about Rand Paul? I think Rand Paul is going to have to explain himself on this. And maybe there is a perfectly good explanation. Maybe he wrote the Wikipedia entry in the first place. <laughs> we'll keep you posted on what sort of explanation the senator offers up, if any. Last night on this show, we had a bit of an exclusive. It was the sort of exclusive that requires us to play a bunch of clips. Um, in this case, it was from this movie, a weird 1997 sci-fi cult classic called Gattaca. Gattaca wasn't a big hit at the time of its release, but it has its fans. And it has now found its way into 2016 presidential politics, thanks to Republican Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky. Rand Paul would very much like to be president. You can tell that because over the last few months, he's been spending lots of time in early presidential nominating states he doesn't live in, like Iowa and South Carolina. Well, yesterday, Rand Paul's I Want to Be President tour took him to the battleground state of Virginia to campaign for Republican Ken Cuccinelli, who's running for governor there. Rand Paul gave a big speech at Jerry Falwell's Liberty University in Virginia, and he spoke at length about Gattaca. He used Gattaca as an allegory. I think for just saying that abortion should be illegal. I think that's what the point was. It, it seemed to be that the point was that people who are pro-choice on the issue of abortion are just like the all-powerful autocratic state in Gattaca. They want to kill off people whose DNA doesn't satisfy society's needs. It's a weird argument. Um, but it was also largely plagiarized. Last night we reported that Rand Paul lifted big sections of that speech about Gattaca right from the Wikipedia entry about that movie. For example, uh, here's how the plot of the movie is described in Wikipedia. Quote, due to frequent screening, Vincent faces genetic discrimination and prejudice. The only way he can achieve his dream of becoming an astronaut is to become a borrowed ladder. Here is uh, Senator Paul from his speech yesterday. Due to the frequent screenings, Vincent faces genetic discrimination and prejudice. The only way he can achieve his dream of being an astronaut is he has to become what's called a borrowed ladder. It went on and on like that. Senator Paul just reciting nearly verbatim whole sections of the Wikipedia page about the movie. After we reported that last night, the story uh, got picked up in lots of different news outlets, national news outlets. Most importantly for Senator Paul, probably it got picked up a lot in his hometown press in Kentucky, including in the Louisville Courier Journal. We, of course, reached out to Senator Paul's office yesterday before we went on the air with the story to see if they had any explanation, any comment about what happened here. Uh, his office never bothered to return our messages. Still today. In the meantime, though, this whole thing has just gotten a whole lot worse. Andrew Kaczynski at BuzzFeed reported today that this bit of Gattaca plagiarism that we uncovered last night was not an isolated incident. Rand Paul has done this before. Mr. Kaczynski pointed to a June 12th speech on immigration reform in which Senator Paul discussed a movie, a different movie, called Stand and Deliver. And again, Senator Paul appears to have plagiarized whole sections of the Wikipedia entry about that film in his speech. The speech that BuzzFeed uncovered was a June 12th speech to the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference in Washington, D.C. Mr. Kaczynski today uh, posted excerpts of that speech at BuzzFeed, and you could compare them uh, to the Wikipedia entry from the movie. But it turns out Rand Paul did this stand-and-deliver plagiarism thing more than once. And tonight we have the tape to prove it. On March 19th of this year, Rand Paul gave a speech to the U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. 
and he made reference to that 1988 movie, Stand and Deliver. The Wikipedia entry for Stand and Deliver describes the main plot of the film this way, quote, in the area of East Los Angeles, California in 1982, in an environment that values a quick fix over education and learning, Jaime Escalante is a new teacher at Garfield High School. That's Wikipedia. Here's Rand Paul. In the area of East LA in 1982, in an environment that values a quick fix on education over learning, Escalante was a new math teacher at Garfield High School. Ah, it's just like Gattaca. Rand Paul is just reading Wikipedia and passing it off as if it is his own words. The Wikipedia entry continues, quote, as the year progresses, he's able to win over the attention of the students by implementing innovative teaching techniques. He is able to transform even the most troublesome teens into dedicated students. Hit it, Senator Paul. As the year progressed, he was able to win over the attention of students by implementing innovative teaching techniques. He transformed even some of the most troublesome teens into dedicated students. Where ever did you hear that? Uh, again, quoting Wikipedia, while Escalante teaches basic arithmetic and elementary and intermediate algebra, he realizes that his students have far more potential. He decides to teach them calculus. Go, Senator, go. While Escalante was teaching basic arithmetic and algebra, he realized that his students had far greater potential. He decided to teach them calculus. This is amazing. I mean, it's not like Rand Paul is just riffing and maybe he has a photographic memory. I mean, he's reading off a teleprompter. This is a prepared speech. Do you want another one? Here's another one. Quote, despite concerns and skepticism of other teachers who feel that you can't teach logarithms to illiterates, Escalante nonetheless develops a program in which his students can eventually take a advanced placement calculus by their senior year. So says Wikipedia. Despite concerns and skepticism of other teachers who said you can't teach logarithms to illiterates, Escalante nonetheless develops a program in which his students can eventually take AP calculus in their senior year. When you are running for president, a plagiarism scandal is not something that you want on your resume, especially not one as embarrassing as plagiarizing from Wikipedia repeatedly. Uh, but that is what Rand Paul has on his hands now. And in the face of this mounting evidence that this wasn't an isolated incident, this is a repeat thing, Senator Paul is not talking. We reached out to his office again today, no response at all. And it's not just us doing the asking anymore. Here's the headline tonight in the Louisville Courier Journal, Rand Paul mum after being accused of plagiarism. Paul's office did not respond to emails seeking comment about the speeches or whether Paul wrote them himself. Rand Paul may not want to answer to me or this show or this network about this, but he's going to have to answer for this to his hometown press or to somebody. He may not want to answer for it, but he's going to have to. This is getting worse by the day. We'll keep you posted on what else we find and whether or not we hear from him. Rand Paul Speaks. Here's the big headline tonight on the New York Times website. This was just posted within the last hour. Senator Rand Paul is accused of plagiarizing his lines from Wikipedia. On Monday night, we reported on this show that a speech that Senator Paul gave at Liberty University in Virginia appeared to have been partly plagiarized. Senator Paul spoke at length in that speech about a movie called Gattaca, and his descriptions of the movie were lifted basically verbatim from the Wikipedia entry about that movie. The senator did not attribute his remarks to Wikipedia. He just lifted whole passages from the website and said them out loud as if they were his own words. Rand Paul gave the Gattaca Wikipedia entry speech on Monday, and we reported that exclusively here on Monday night. Then on Tuesday, yesterday, BuzzFeed reported that Senator Paul did the same thing with another movie, a movie called Stand and Deliver. He spoke about that movie in a speech earlier this year, and again, he just plagiarized the Wikipedia entry about the movie. BuzzFeed found that bit of plagiarism in a speech that Rand Paul gave in June of this year. Last night, we reported that Senator Paul also plagiarized that same stand and deliver Wikipedia entry in a speech that he gave a few months earlier in March. The Wikipedia entry for Stand and Deliver describes the main plot of the film this way, quote, in the area of East Los Angeles, California in 1982, in an environment that values a quick fix over education and learning, Jaime Escalante is a new teacher at Garfield High School. That's Wikipedia. Here's Rand Paul. In the area of East LA in 1982, in an environment that values a quick fix on education over learning, Escalante was a new math teacher at Garfield High School. Two clear cases of plagiarism from a sitting U.S. senator in two pretty high profile speeches. Rand Paul is not just any U.S. senator, though. He is a senator who wants to be president. 
Plagiarism scandals have dogged presidential candidates before, notably Joe Biden in 1988, and it took him a decade or more to recover. This sort of thing has happened before in recent American history, and it has real consequences for candidates for years and years when they do stuff like this. For two days now, Senator Paul and his office responded to this evidence of plagiarism by basically not responding at all. The senator would not talk to us. He would not talk to his hometown paper. He would not talk to various other news outlets that tried to get a comment from him on this, some sort of explanation. He just didn't want to talk about it. But tonight, Jorge Ramos has arrived. Jorge Ramos comes to the rescue. Senator Paul sat down for an interview today with Jorge Ramos of Fusion TV. And Mr. Ramos, in that interview, he asked Senator Paul about these instances of plagiarism. He put the charges right to him. Now, I'm going to show you the entire exchange here in just a second. But before I, have, before I do, I have to say that it seems to me that what's going on in this exchange is that Rand Paul maybe does not understand what plagiarism is. And that is an unexpected thing, but judge for yourself. Here is Senator Paul's response in its entirety. Senator, as a journalist, I, I have to ask you this question. MSNBC accused you of plagiarism on Monday. They, <laughs> they accused you of stealing four lines from Wikipedia from, for your speech at Liberty University. So is this true? Yeah. I mean, what they're saying that, that you <laughs> borrow lines from a Wikipedia entry about the movie Gattaca. Uh, so it, what happened? Yeah. We did, and I, I let did? people know that the well, we 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 borrowed the plot lines from Gattaca. It's a movie, and I gave credit to the people who wrote the movie. I also borrowed lines from Ray Bradbury and gave him credit as well. I think they're arguing about whether or not things are properly footnoted, and uh, there are technicalities to this. But uh, nothing I said was not given attribution to where it came from. I talked about a movie, Gattaca. It is a copyrighted movie by the screenwriters, and I gave every bit of credit to where that plot line came from. The rest but of it's making a mountain out of a molehill from people, I think, basically who are political enemies and have an axe to grind. Well, because it, it seems that it's not the first time. Um, the website BuzzFeed, they say that you borrowed several lines from, the, from Wikipedia again for a speech in June to a Latino organization. Again, in in this think, case, I think uh, once again, the movie Stand and Deliver. It, and once again, it's a disagreement on how you footnote things. And I think people footnote things different in an academic paper than they do in a public speech. But if we were to present any of these speeches for publication that have footnotes in, but a lot of times the speech is, uh, you, people don't take the time to footnote things. But I think it was very clear that the plot line was not something I created. I didn't cra claim yeah. that I created the movie Gattaca. See, that's what's absurd about this. The plot line from Gattaca belongs to one person, the guy, the screenwriter, and I gave him credit for that. So it's kind of ridiculous to sort of say, you know, you didn't do proper footnotes. Do, do, uh, it's you, making a mountain out of a molehill. Do you write your own speech as senator? Or is someone a else lot helping of you with that? A lot of people participate in writing the speeches, so they're not really attributable to one person. But the thing is, is that if you look at any of my speeches, there's never been any indication that I'm trying to take credit for someone else's work. So really, this is uh, really about uh, information and attacks coming from haters. You know, the person who's leading this attack, she's been uh, spreading hate on me for about three years now, and I don't intend for it to go away. But I also don't see her as an objective uh, news source. Senator, you can call me whatever names you want to. Trust me, I have been called worse. Uh, but this is not a personal thing for me at all. I feel no emotion about this. And I do not hate you, nor have I ever tried to spread hate on you. And I'm sorry you feel that way. Uh, but also, you didn't borrow plot lines from these movies. You read the Wikipedia page out loud. The point is that you seem to have a frequent habit of plagiarizing parts of your speeches. And perhaps that is explained by the fact that you do not understand what plagiarism means. I mean, nobody's accusing you of pretending that you wrote Gattaca or that you wrote Stand and Deliver. That is not what this is about. This is not about you explaining a plot line. This is about you lifting other people's words verbatim and pretending that they are your own. This is about you lifting entire sections of a website, inserting them into your own speeches, and then passing them off as your own original thoughts. This is something that high school students know not to do. And you are presenting yourself as a potential candidate for president. This has nothing to do with me. You heard Senator Paul there say, quote, nothing I said was not given attribution to where it came from. That is absolutely and provably not true. Senator, somebody else's published words end up, ended up in your speech without attribution. How did that happen? Do you understand that that is a problem?
I'm grateful to Jorge Ramos at Diffusion that Senator Rand Paul has finally been forced to respond to this plagiarism problem tonight, given his absolute incoherence in his explanation. I have a feeling this might not be the end of it, though.